All right, guys. Uh, today's session, we're going to keep moving forward with our uh, pow black powder French infantry. I'm going to go in with uh, doing some of the packs today. I'm going to do a lot of them in this red leather. I really like this color a lot. It's Vallejo. This says Flames of War. I've got a couple tubes of this or bottles of this. <coughs> we're going to go in with. Uh, a small amount because I'm just going to do a few figs for you and then we're going to go and I'm going to do some uh, do some of the guns. We're going to do some of the guns. I'm going to go in with one drop of paint, one drop of water. My trusty stir stick. We're going to go in We're going to get this a really nice consistency. So she flows don't you know and listen to a couple of my WWPD podcasts uh, here earlier working on uh, my Zis 5 Soviet truck all right let's go in and let's uh, start working on these packs I'm gonna go in probably a little too thin a little too thin I think we're going to start doing 2 to 1 ratio, is what I'm finding. I'm going with a little bit more paint. I remember our last segment when we were working on the great coats um, and reviewing the video, you know, <coughs> it looked like the paint was on too thick, but it's really not, guys. Once it, once it dries, once that paint dries, it settles down really nice, and uh, you get a really nice finish. Especially once you add your wash. Yeah, this is like perfect. So, let's go in with a little bit more paint here. It just flows really nice on there. Try not to get it on too many of the straps. And uh, definitely start saving up your caps, guys. If you like energy drinks or um, Powerade, I'm sure in Europe, you guys over there in Europe, you guys have your sim similar drinks to Gatorades and their Powerades um, and saving those caps. I know some guys use wine bottle corks. If you're a wine drinker, that's a great idea. Uh, and then they just put pins in them. Okay, so uh, there's one pack. I'm kind of looking around. He's got one of those uh, covers on his on his canteen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that with this color. Now remember, we're doing mass infantry painting here so we want to not go crazy with the number of colors but try to I try to vary the colors so that we get some different uh, different interest going on here so see we got that strap going down the middle of this guy's pack and I'm gonna just uh, avoid that And then once we do a wash, they have very little touching up to do. I do a little touching up of the straps. Because when you thin your paint down a little bit like this and you've got a nice base coat, you get those variances in the colors. You may be able to see that. This was one of the great coats we did the other day. Or in our last session, I should say. Several days ago. You see how the top, let me see if I can point here, with the top of this. Right here is a little bit lighter than the darker or the lower areas, which is exactly what you want. So the paint kind of settles as it dries a little bit like a wash. And uh, that's how it, the, the light plays on your eyes as like a, a painter, a portrait painter. You know, things that are on the outside are lighter. Stuff on the inside are darker. I'm going like that. I twist and turn them, make sure I'm getting all the nooks and crannies good. And you see the paint just flows really nice down in there. 
like I said in other videos, I've used a wet palette before. Now these are your their little onions. I'll come in with like a like a reddish brown, something like that later, um, and hit that. We'll be doing the guns here next. As soon as I do a few packs to show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. This guy's got a similar pack. He's got a big strap down the middle. We'll leave that alone. And you can see how nice his paint's flowing now. It's perfect. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing uh, two small drops of paint to one drop of water. But I did not like using a wet palette. I just didn't like it. I've got one. I used it. I think I really think that my paint's too wet. And I tend to do a little bit at a time. I've got 32. I usually don't do that many at once, but it was the final batch and I didn't want to break it up into two batches. And I said, uh, the heck with it. I'm just going to do all 32 at once. And it hasn't been so bad, honestly. I might just start doing larger, a little bit larger batches than what I normally have been doing. <coughs> and um, go at it like that. There's three popped out just that fast. Boom, boom, boom. Assembly line painting. And if you're using a good brush, you've got good lighting. And you've got these little tricks, like I'm learning. I'll adjust my boom here a little bit. You will see that it goes pretty quick. I can't say enough about having a good brush. You cannot use those cheap brushes. You're just going to get frustrated and give up. And like I said, you know, you've got to, let me show you here, ring it, I've seen it, I've shown it on other videos. This is what you need to get. It's almost a consistency of a solid soap bar on the inside. You get your brush a little wet, you get a little bit of that soap on there. You clean it with your fingers. And I use that every session, every session. At the end of my painting session, I clean out my bristles thoroughly with that soap. And it has a conditioner in it that keeps your bristles nice and soft. The other tip is you take the paintbrush bristles, put them in the lips of your mouth, and then reform the bristles with uh, with your lips so to have a nice fine point. And then of course then you come in, a lot of times I'll come back in with my detail brush. And those are the two main brushes that I use guys. I mean that's what I'm using 90% of the time actually 98% of the time if I think about it. I will go in and just go to town. I'll let one of those packs dry. I should be dry here soon. Got a little bit on the strap doing that. I was going a little too fast. Not paying attention. Then that'll be something that will hit the last phase We'll go through with some white, some flat white, and touch up the straps. Any straps that have any stray paint color on them. Um, after we do the wash, we'll see how much highlighting we get on the jacket. It's usually enough to just do the wash, and I don't really have to do a lot of highlights on the jacket since I started using my paint a little thinner, because you can see how it does almost start highlighting on its own. Um, Look at his canteen. He's got a tin cup, so we'll hit that with some bolt gun metal later on. So I'm kind of just using these guys that we did with the uh, great coat scoot, so you can see how once that paint dries, it's it's uh, it gives you a nice effect. It can do a nice result. And then. We're going to come back in with some new wood. I like to use the new wood for the gun stocks. My Vallejo color I like to use. 
and uh, we'll get that prepped and we'll do some guns for you. And get a little bit of paint on the package. I tried to knock it off with my finger if I can. And we'll come back in. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. So you got a little paint right there on his shoulder. Use a little a little hobby. Sometimes I can get it off, sometimes I can't if I just scrape on it just a little bit. It at least lightens it enough so once you do the wash you really can't see it. And it'll cut down on some of the touch-ups. Because then you can move through these regiments a lot faster. And they look amazing on the table. Now again, this is you know, when you're doing mass infantry battles like this, you're really going after a, what we call a tabletop standard, guys. It's a guy with a dark gray, and I left his pants white. Once we'll do a wash on him, we'll have to come back in with the with the uh, with some flat white and highlight his pants. You can see how fast this goes, guys. You can just really crack open a, a beverage, get you some snacks. And you can come in and just knock a pile of miniatures out. And we'll come back in with some bolt gun metal do that little pot and um, we'll keep moving along. Alright, so we're going to go in. I'm going to finish that up. Pretty much used up most of that color on my palette. <clears throat> Taking my brush and stick it in my mouth. Once she's clean, see how nice and sharp that is now. This brush, and you can maybe tell by how this is faded. I've had this brush now for probably several months at least two months if not going on three months so it goes to show you how well you can <coughs> keep these and how long they last and then I've got two packs of the more games most wanted brushes that's what you go after guys Amazon 15 bucks five bucks a brush you can't go wrong with that kit so I always keep spare brushes on hand when I am ready to change them out but if you take care of your brush you're gonna be amazed how fast how long that goes alright so we're gonna go in with our um, that's light brown here's our new wood I'm gonna show you the color new wood this says Panzer Aces but it is a Vallejo Vallejo shake it up again <coughs> I put one of my sinkers in the bottom of the I'm going to go one, two, I'm going to come in with one drop of water, one little drop of water, and my fancy stirring stick, we're going to go in, we're going to stir, 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 tap, 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 get it mixed up nice. Yeah, see that's a nice consistency right there, almost like milk. Really thick cream, yeah, actually. Now, my guns, I'm going in with my detail brush. I'm going to get my detail brush wet. I'm going to go back in with one of our figs that we just painted. And I'm going to go in with my new wood. I'm going to load up the brush. And I'm going to go in with my detail brush. And around. And around. And around. Do the bottom. Now, with the stocks, tabletop standard, I'm coming in. I'm trying to avoid that strap, that rifle strap, and I'm drawing down, drawing down. If I get a little on there, it's not a big deal. Once I do the barrel with the bolt gun metal, you're not going to see it. 
So there's your strap, it's still white. Keep the strap white. You can see the fitting on the end of the gun. I'm going to go around that. A little bit on this side because again I'm going to come back in with the bolt gun metal and hit the bayonet. We'll take this same brush and go zip right up the way, right up the way, right down here and you just uh, nailed out a, a rifle. So it's really not that hard guys. It's a matter of developing a, a, just a process and doing it over and over again. And once you do several of them you'll be fine. Again I'm going on the inside you see I'm using this cap how I'm holding this cap and it's becoming like a stabilizer for me and my brush it gives you a ton of control a ton of control again here I am see I'm resting my finger it's given me stability on my brush and then I'm not pressing real hard I'm just lightly lightly pressing the brush. I'm going to turn it around the back end of the stock. I'm going to hit, I don't want to hit that strap because the straps were white. Well I'm sure dingy white. Once we do a wash it will be dingy white. And that's it. That's all it takes guys. You just don't have to get it on the inside. You're, no one's going to see that. We're doing all the visible surfaces. Starting with the rifle stock. Keep an eye on the time here. I'm going to go upstairs and help my wife make and get our roast chicken ready for supper. For Sunday dinner. We're going to do roast chicken. And um, mashed potatoes and gravy. Boom. 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 Straight on up. And turn around to the side. I think I'm going to have to attach my boom to the table over here to the side because I keep, every time I move, I'm rocking this table. So, like I said, I've got a new device I'm, I'm trying out for doing these tutorials. And, um, there you have it. I'm going to eventually get it to where it's doing really well. Starting to play with our new, my new uh, software editing program which is Adobe Premiere Elements. I'm not doing anything too fancy yet, but I do like it. I think as time goes on and I feel comfortable with the basic stuff that I do, I can come in and do a little bit more advanced editing and cutaways and stuff maybe. Let me come in again here. On the back. And there you have it guys. That's how I knock out my rifles. And we'll come back in with bolt gun metal. On the next segment. Do another rifle here real quick. I'll show you how you can just bang these out. You know, in the first few times of you guys, new guys watching this and just getting into the hobby, you're going to do more touch ups at first. You know, you're going to go in that last final phase and you're going to touch up where you got little bits of paint maybe on the wrong color or on the jacket. And then you'll get tired of that. Doing, and the, you want to want to do less touch-ups, and you'll learn to control the brush better as time goes. I've been painting since high school days, and I'm still not perfect at it. You know, just get it as good as you can. Um, and again, with with the detail work, I'm I find that being able to brace my hands so that I can get really nice controlled 
strokes like that is one of the keys and see how I'm using my hands and my fingers along with this cap and my hand is on the top of the table which is why I'm getting some of the camera shake because this is a boom that's attached to the table but I have another table next to, next to this table I can attach it to I won't shake uh, but that's that's giving me my stability right or I'll hold it close to my chest if I'm sitting back in my painting chair when I don't have the camera out um, and I'm sitting back and maybe watching a video or a movie I'll, I'll take this instead of resting on my table I'll actually rest this up against my chest and make almost like a tripod uh, you know with my chest my arms and my hands Um, to give me that stability so that I have control. So again, sharpen it with my tongue and my lips. And uh, there you have it.